Time. Welcome back to another episode of Total Extreme Wrestling 2016. We continue our marathon of NWA saves as we try to get ourselves up to the current day uh, for the new release of TEW 2020. We're going to do it. We're going to get there. We're going to do two episodes today. Uh, not much to say about it. We have power and then I believe we have Wrestle War. Um, so it should be pretty exciting. Main event will be Chris Jericho versus Nick Aldis in a rematch. Um, it'd be interesting to see where that goes because we do have a wild card in which Brody Lee has the Founders Championship and could technically cash in like a money in the bank and uh, try to interject himself in the match or take it after the match or not at all. It'll be really interesting to see how it goes. Um, I'm not even sure how it goes yet. Uh, we only have three more appearances from Chris Jericho from our Alliance uh, trade. So this will be one of them. Uh, and we can either have him, you know, show up on power tonight and then the pay-per-view or and then one more time off, you know, the beaten path, or we could have him here retain, have him on one power and then the next pay-per-view. That's kind of the plan right now. Um, using him as sort of a... Uh, you know, special attraction to kind of boost it up. Uh, unfortunately, with uh, with 2016, um, it doesn't have the new integration with 2020, where in 2020, uh, TW 2020, if you have a major wrestler on the card, you'll get a bump in popularity uh, or a bump in attendance because you announced a, a major name. Um, but it'll still do well for our show and, and hopefully our momentum. Um I saw a few people talking about our broadcast and how this is probably going to kill us. Um, I don't know if we can alter it. I would not hate just getting rid of it. Um, the show. Yeah, I don't think. I don't think I can just lower the. Unfortunately, yeah, no, I can't just like get rid of the um the time for the because I was thinking about maybe just lowering it to like oh hey like two months or something like that and then we can get out of that damn contract. Um, the other thing we could do is just cancel. It's gonna cost us one point eight million. Uh, someone had suggested just giving ourselves that one, $1. 1.8 exactly and just canceling it uh, to get out of that contract. Just cheat a little bit just to, to move out of it. It's a nightmare contract, and it's really unrealistic because uh, YouTube is not a – YouTube is a free platform. So the idea that if I found a better opportunity, I would just stop – it's not YouTube Red, right? Like YouTube Red I get because theoretically it's it's a – um, more of a television-focused subscription model. They have contracts. There is no contract for YouTube. Um, you can just set something up right now and go. So uh, it doesn't make a lot of sense here, right? I mean, let me know. I I'm going to hold off this episode, but I, I want an affirmation. I don't, I don't, I don't want to cheat. I don't want to be a cheater, but also I don't mind just getting rid of it and moving on. Um in which case, well, all I would do is just give myself the money, cancel, pay the fee, and we'd be back to the exact amount of money. The only thing that would be different would be that we are out of that contract and we can move on. I'll let you guys think about that in the comments and then uh, whatever direction you guys feel is right. Either we have to stick with it or whether it's unrealistic and we can kind of get out of it and then move to something else. I will leave it upon you. Let's go ahead and let's get to power uh, without any further ado. we got two shows to do, so we got no time to waste. WWE calls up William Regal. Good for him. <laughs> what an up and come. <laughs> uh, boy. 
Jado's injured. Nothing in the news. I'm always kind of trying to keep. You know, David Starr. Is he going to be wrestling America? Is Kevin Hunter a show? I mean, he would try to unionize us. Um, but he might not be a bad kid. I'm going to shortlist him. I've been thinking about. I mean, he's kind of everywhere, but might be a great, like, upper mid card heel for us to move someone else out of. Um, might not be a bad idea. And contract negotiations for Hefner. We're pulling him back into the fold, which is good. All right. Bailey's about to lose her contract. 1500 is way, 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 way too much uh, for for our women's division, I think, uh, where we're at. So we'll, we'll, we'll pass on that. Um, we're probably going to get rid of Sasha soon anyways, so that we'll, we'll move on with that. I heard a great tip um, on, I think, the Fantasy Booker subreddit, and something I'm going to start doing from now on. If you have your company set to integrated instead of um, division for women's division, you can put them on the uh, push direction. So mid card, you know, uh, uh, main event, etc. Um, and you'll be able to see where they are. One one of my complaints, kind of, of this game is that I don't know where the women's division is in terms of talent. Um, you know, Madison Eagles is probably a main eventer. Do I know that? I don't. I kind of have to assume by money um and skill but that's all so it's kind of annoying apparently if you uh do it as a uh, integrated roster um as long as you're booking it you know uh, there's other challenges with that but uh, uh apparently if you do it that way you can actually line them up on the push uh, appropriately so you'll know who your women's division upper mid carters are lower mid carters etc seems useful might be something i do in the future Keeping on, looking on uh, David Starr there. Should be ready to go. So let's see what drama comes to us now. Probably New Jack showing up high. <laughs> Back to the ratings is dipping quite a bit. Scott Steiner and Brody Lee got an issue. Oh, boy. Uh, Scott Steiner was being a jerk backstage. Eventually threw a punch at Brody Lee. It was enough. Uh, it was a bad enough move that he got beaten up as a result. Um... I can't suspend him because I think he is under written. He's not under a written contract. Um, I'll fine him. It's the highest punishment we can give. Oh no! Oh no! New Jack was being a jerk. Eventually threw a punch. Brent Pillman bad enough move to get. Oh, God damn it! Fine. New Jack is unhappy. Pillman's pleased. That's good. Oh boy. Um. What? What did we do? <laughs> what did we do? I don't know why we did this. Uh, just form some con random connections here. I don't know. Let's try. <laughs> God. All right. Um, still the old power, Atlanta Power Studio. We're going to end up having a sellout because we're expecting uh, 2072. And we can only fit 2,000 to capacity. So uh, we'll have to keep that in mind. Now we got one more episode here for the go home. I think all the storyline beats are basically set up for the pay-per-view. So now it's just sort of about kind of finishing off and trying to boost these storylines as high as we can. Um, so actually, Eli Drake, we don't really have anybody with him now. Um, so we'll have to we'll have to start getting. I'm gonna have to groom this out um, and get rid of some of these and uh, make some new storylines probably about time to end them and wrap them up. So we'll do that at the next pay-per-view. Um, but Pillman, Pillman and Marty Scrolls conclusion, we kind of need to build up towards. Um, it's heat is fine. Uh, you know, it's not horrendous. Um, we only need two storylines with 41 heat to meet the demands of the fans. So we're, we're definitely doing that. We're pretty much there on almost all of them. Not all of them, all of them, but... Um, We'll, we'll start to kill some of them and uh, try to start some new storylines. And hopefully we can get a little bit more energy out of some of them. Um, I'd like to see some C-minuses or something like that. 
All right, guys, we got our go home show for power in the books. Let's go ahead and see what we got. Again, a little bit difficult to get everything in in only an hour, but uh, we may do with what we need to do, I think. Um, so we started off with uh, Caden Yuta versus Caleb Conley and Royce Isaacs. Um, eh, it's not a great match. Uh, <laughs> Caleb was really off his game, and they don't work together as a tag team very well, uh, which we'll, we'll make sure not to do again until I forget again. Um Kate Yuta actually defeat Caleb Conley and Royce Isaacs in eight minutes. Wheeler Yuta defeats Royce Isaacs with submission. Um, Wheeler is definitely the better performer of the four. Uh, Jason Cade not far behind. Uh, Caleb and, and Isaacs not looking great out here. Um, worked a crowd match. Did get the show to a strong start. Wheeler's improving in performance. N not a great rating but um could change over time um trying to give the new team a little bit more momentum and uh yeah i was kind of expecting for like a d minus here but i guess we'll have to make do with what we have you know i drink saves the day we have a interview with david marquez and he starts asking him about um uh the fact that uh eli drake is being slated to face brody lee at uh wrestle war for the alliance title but he says he's not worried um, that because he's got the board behind his back and he knows that he will succeed if he needs to um, because he will do anything to, to succeed. So we kind of set up a little bit of build, a uh, very short build of what is Brody Lee doing basically during the pay-per-view. Um, you know, it's it's like a Poochie situation. If, if, if Brody Lee's not on the show, everyone should be asking, where's Brody Lee? Um, because he does have that Founders Championship, and um, he should be an element in Chris Jericho versus Nick Aldis. Uh, we have to have a reason for him not being, potentially, if he's not, right? And so we have um, him going after the Alliance title, and obviously he is the enemy of the board because he is the Founders Champion, and he is not part of the Founders League, and he's turned our back on him. So it kind of makes natural sense that uh, he's got some kind of a uh, con kind of collision between these two parties. Um, so that's pretty good. Got the crowd hotter and uh, great rating. Um, no improvements, not shocking. So you know, Eli Drake does what he does and does it successfully. Also, pretty good segment. Um, we have our contract signing, very cliche, but uh, it works for what we need to have for it. Uh, Tessa Blanchard. Uh, going after Sasha Banks at the contract signing, um, jumping over the table and attacking her, actually uh, downing uh, Sasha. So kind of building a potential of uh, Tessa being the more dominant of the two. Does pretty well. All right, this is not as great. Um, to to the, my, my fans of Tim Storm, they'll love this match um, because we debut Colt Cabana now having been brainwashed um, and he is fighting Tim Storm and he wins uh, and beats Tim Storm in three minutes with a Colt 45. Uh, Colt had a 47, Tim had a 31, got the crowd hotter. Uh, Josephus is ringside and doing great work because he is um, basically Colt Cabana's new uh, manager. Uh, yeah. No, I want to turn... And his new gimmick is a brainwashed. Got above average. We're, we're keeping him as a face, technically, because the brainwashing won't last for long. Oops. I forgot to put them on screen. Um, oh, well. Shouldn't matter <laughs> too much. They don't get any uh, improvements, though, unfortunately. Uh, Josie Fitt grabs a microphone in a post-match and talks about his new buddy, Colt Cabana. He says, the book of Josephus parables, 1411, as he opens up his dusty tome of uh, weird cult uh, parables. He says, while the jester is to be feared as the worst crimes to the mind are from those who would make light of you and the world. Do not fear, for it is inevitable that they will turn and witness the horrors that this reality can bring. Um... Colt Cabana stands there the whole time. He's completely zoned out. He has seen the truth. I have shown him his past, his reality, and ultimately the future of all of us. I have done what I could to set him on a path to salvation, 
now his time to cement his future. He just needs one last thing to do. Uh, before Josephus could finish, Flip Gordon comes out of the audience and attacks him, um, starts pummeling Josephus on the ground. Colcabana picks up uh, Flip Gordon, throws him aside, saving Josephus, and starts attacking him and leveling him out. Um, Colcabana just seems to be completely gone at this point. Yeah, but why did I put Dave Laguna? Man, I'm just screwing this up. Dave Laguna shows up for some reason to do an interview, but it works. Uh, it's going to be Dave Marquez again. Uh, Nick Aldis is being interviewed, and he says, you know, are you worried about the Chris Jericho match? You're building up some hype to it. Um, you lost the first time. How do you feel about the second time? You have a rematch. Um, do you think you can get the belt again? Um, you know, Nick Aldis says he's not worried. He's got a newfound strength. He knows that the board of directors are on his side, not Chris Jericho. And um, he's willing to do anything to succeed where Chris Jericho is just here um, for notoriety. Um, and he says, you know, the, the NWA World's title will be around his belt again. He knows it. Um, does pretty well. We have an exhibition match between Brody Lee versus Rowe, one of the members of the board room. The board of directors handpick cronies. Um, Brody Lee does defeat Rowe in eight minutes uh, with a pile driver. This is a pretty good match, actually. Uh, most of it is Brody. Um, the performance of Brody Lee stood out as really good. Um, his face turns never going to work, apparently. Um, Rowe had a 33, Brody had a 65, Rowe's improving a rumble, and we end up getting a C- minus from this. Um, afterwards, Paul Pinky George comes out, kind of starts clapping to Brody Lee, having won, um, and then the rest of the board directors, or the board room, come out with Eli Drake and Nick Aldis and uh, Hanson, and storm him and assault him and uh, completely down Brody Lee. Um, kind of making a point that, you know, they're unified. It doesn't You could take out one of them. It doesn't matter. The rest of them are there. Uh, also does really well. Uh, Brody Lee's getting better as gimmick, which is nice. And we did gain some heat for that storyline, which is always nice. No. Which one? Brody? It, it's just not going to happen. It's just not. I know it's not going to happen. I've been building up for 13 segments and still not going well. Um, it's fine. We'll we'll just get rid of it. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and it's kind of an odd main event. We have Brian Pillman Jr. and the Von Eriks versus Villain Enterprise and uh, and well, all of Villain Enterprise. Uh, kind of this is kind of a very sports entertainment me kind of um, uh, pay, like match before the pay per view. Pillman's going to go against Skrull. Von Erichs are going to challenge uh, Villain Enterprise for the titles. So, you know, we, we have the, uh, the, the competitors here kind of facing off against each other. Um, Ross and Marshall were really off their game, which is unfortunate. Everybody else seemed pretty good. Built up both of the storylines nicely. Um, it's, it matches okay, though. Uh, really, the Brody one should have been um, last, I don't know what I was saying when I was doing this, um, but Pillman ends up defeating Villain Enterprise, uh, ends up defeating Brody King, kind of giving momentum on this team's side, um, potentially indicating that, uh, he will conquer Marty Skrull, or it could be a, uh, you know, a double, du double twist kind of situation of like, oh, no, actually, uh, that's not the case at all. Um, kind of wanted to build some momentum up for Pillman um, going into this. I'm probably going to go over Marty Skrull. Not sure yet. Um, I'm kind of done with that storyline, and I want to propel him up to main eventer. So I think I'm going to move him into a storyline against maybe Scott Steiner for a bit um, and have him just completely, completely wreck him. Um, and that will hopefully be enough to move Pillman up to the main event. Um, that's my hope, at least. Um, overall, though, despite the lackluster main event and a really wonky open, got us a C minus, which is pretty good. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Increased our popularity. Uh, can't really complain. That's that's as pretty much as good as we could ask for, I think. 
let's see what the response was. I would have to imagine general consensus was that was a pretty good show. What the hell? Seamus just signed with AEW. Sure. Uh, <laughs> feedback was really well. We sold out 2,000 fans. Uh, got a point two TV rating. Not too shabby, actually. Um, boy, that, that's a weird one, though. I tell you. Um, it's odd. But I guess that works, I suppose. So we have Wrestle War coming up. So we're just gonna go ahead right into it. Let's, uh, like I said, this is gonna be a double, double show. We're trying to get up to that, uh, get as close to to April as we can for 2020. So let's keep moving here. Well, um, it it was good when it lasted. Uh, New Jack is leaving. As as quickly as he came, um, and and no one's really crying about it. Um, an odd oddity. We'll have him have a match tonight, um, and we're gonna have someone go over him and hopefully not get stabbed. <laughs> Let's. He has a major morale issues. He's very angry. Well, you know what? What do you what do you want? We got YouTube Red for the pay-per-view. Locker room rating is low. Um, why not? Let's do an elaborate plot on him. Go down ground with the rest of the locker room. New Jack took it. Took it well too. There you go. Well-known, good sense of humor, that guy. Uh, <laughs> so we got a show. It is in the southeast. And then the next one, we're actually going to be doing in the mid-Atlantic, um, which is kind of cool, um, changing it up a little bit. We have 3,000 people are expected to be here. Uh, what's the best venue? Let's go generic. Let's try to get as many people in here as we can. Um so it, the generic should theoretically find us something that's like close to it, like 3,500 or something like that. Um, it's not as much of a hotbed, so we won't get that bonus, but we'll get more of the ticket sales, which we need. So that's fine. All right. So we get 180 minutes, um, a lot of time to do some stuff, and uh, we're going to do some pre-shows. going to try to pretty much get every single person on the roster on the show so they're not mad. Um, so maybe some battle royal, stuff like that. We'll see what it is. Main event, obviously, is going to be Chris Jericho versus Nick Aldis, and um, we have to have some other headliners there, too. So we'll take a look at it and see how Wrestle War number one shows uh, ends up doing for our show. All right, guys, ready for Wrestle War? I am. Let's see what the hell this show looks like. So I got, I think, everybody but one person on the show. Which is kind of ridiculous, um, but we had enough time, and I thought, let's get everyone on here. Uh, so we open a show off with a five-woman scramble match uh, for scoring in most falls and a ten-minute time limit. It's pretty bad. Um, Kimberly wins, and uh, did get to show off to a strong start, but all of them are kind of of mixed uh, entering performance, and we definitely suffered from it. Um, yeah, that's, that's not a great way to start a show. Give me Kimberly a win, though, um, and got the rest of the women's division on the show. Um, this does better. Another kind of, here's a bunch of people that aren't wrestling, aren't working tonight, but here you go, have have a match. Um, Scott Steiner defeats everybody in a pretty poor match in an uh, uh, elimination match. Uh, Caleb, then Tim Storm, then Royce Isaacs, and finally Eddie Kingston. Um, Build up Scott Steiner just a bit so that when we have him go against, like, uh, Brian Pillman, we can really decimate him. Um, yeah, this match also isn't great. <laughs> it's it's fine. Um, it, 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 it did what it needed to do, which is get everybody on the show. Uh, we start off a show for real, I suppose, with um, the Von Erichs versus Villain Enterprises. Um, 
in a very unbuilt up tag match. I don't, honestly, I don't even remember if they were number one competitors at this point, but we kind of threw it all together. Uh, <laughs> but uh, Von Erichs, who have had a series of wins, qualify to basically fight the Villain Enterprise for the uh, tag belts. Uh, ultimately, though, Villain Enterprise defeats the Von Erichs um, and retain the tag titles um, through a cheap way, through a roll-up. Um, PCO was tiring. Got the crowd buzzing. Actually, not too bad um, overall for, for what we're getting out of these guys. This is a pretty decent match, and Villain Enterprise makes the defense number two of the world tag titles. <laughs> um, uh, New Jack's leaving. So uh, Ricky Starks um, has this match I had. I've never seen this. A little heat and embarrassing wrestling. Ricky Starks defeats New Jack in five minutes by pinfall. Um Tim Storm's ringside cheering on Ricky Starks. Did some good work there. Uh, New Jack had a 13 and Ricky Starks had a 25. Uh, we just buried um, New Jack. But it is what it is. Uh, tried to get him not to be so upset about it, but he still was furious. Uh, wasted on drugs. Not shocking. Uh, we have a triple tag team match. Again, just trying to kind of get the other tag teams on the the card. The Ascension defeat Cade and Yuta and War Machine. Um, Yuta and Cade were first eliminated and then War Machine. Um, trying to build up the Colts' dominance a bit. Um, the crowd was already pretty hot. I was kind of thinking that the uh, the match with New Jack was going to absolutely bomb, so uh, we kind of had a lift the crowd match. Didn't quite, wasn't quite placed here um, that should be needed. Josephus doing great role as a manager, uh, which is what we expect, and you know for the most part we're moving him into almost entirely a managerial capacity. He's a great mic worker, and he just seems to be great managing people on the side, so it seems to be doing pretty well. We have Tessa versus Sasha for the women's title. Sasha is pissed at this. Despite me giving it a flash pinfall with a tainted finish and her to dominate and her be kept strong, she despised losing the belt here. Um, and we'll be, I mean, we are going to be getting rid of her soon, but man, was she upset. Um, Tessa had a 53. Sasha had a 60. Eight um, got to gave the crowd a little bit of a breather. Um, we did gain heat for it, but ultimately Tessa defeats Sasha um, with a cheap roll up, and in fact wins the women's world title. Afterwards, Tessa holds up the belt in front of Sasha, mocking her, um, which does pretty well here. We move to Flip Gordon versus Colt Cabana. Um, Colt Cabana defeats Flip Gordon in ten minutes by submission. Um, it's, it's not great. Uh, Flip only had a 30, Colt had a 55, got the crowd hotter, no improvements. Um, but the power of the Colt has now taken over Colt Cabana completely and seems to be, um, giving him success here. Flip was unable to get him to his senses. Um, it was a hardcore match, um, didn't really work well for Flip. Um, Afterwards, Flip tries to knock Colt back to his senses, and it's just not working. Uh, Colt Cabana further assaults him, just hitting him repeatedly with a chair. Uh, it does pretty great. Actually got the crowd hotter, um, and we do not end the story between Flip and Colt. In fact, we should start a new storyline. I should have started a storyline between them here, honestly. Um, but I think this will be an ongoing issue between the two. We have Marty Scroll versus Brian Pillman Jr., for the Carl's Juniors presents NWA North American title. Uh, Brian Pillman defeats Marty Scroll in 17 minutes of the Tornado DDT, makes defense number two of his title. Um, they're about evenly matched. This does pretty okay. Overall, we got a C minus, which is pretty great for us generally. Um, it's very rare for us to get higher than that, so um, that's that's awesome. I think the general rule of thumb is. Um, good is whatever your popularity rating is for your company. So if your popularity rating is 47 
and you're hitting a 47, that's a good match because you're just not going to get higher than that. If you get something above that, it's an exceptional. So overall, seeing these C-minuses means that we're doing the right thing. Um, if the show is over a certain amount beyond your popularity, you get a huge boost in your um, your your ratings and your 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 uh, your po- overall popularity from that because you're putting on a performance that's way above basically what you should um, see. So overall, C minus is pretty pretty damn good for where we're at. This match is a little underwhelming here. Um, good heat, decent wrestling. Eli Drake um, versus Brody Lee. Eli Drake does retain the title. Uh, he grabs the tights of Brody Lee. Uh, we also had Paul Pinky George distract Drake by accident. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it still happens where Brody Lee still loses, though. Um, the, the distractions and everything else kind of ends up um, not going in his favor. Uh, 64 for Brody Lee, 51 for Eli Drake. Um, I think I had him booked. No, oh, yeah, I think I messed that up. It should have been. Uh, Brody that got distracted, but Brody Lee was dominant in the match, so he didn't lose much momentum or anything like that. Um, we keep Eli Drake as the national heavyweight title champion for our alliance. Uh, afterwards, the boardroom come out and gang up on Brody Lee. A fight breaks out that leads to the backstage, and uh, we see him going to kind of like the maintenance area of the uh, arena in which. Uh, they end up actually handcuffing him to a beam um, and hitting him a couple times before leaving him. So Brody Lee seems to be completely out of the picture. Um, he is Founders Champion, so he does have the ability technically to um, try to insert himself into Chris Jericho's match, but uh, being handcuffed to a pole seems very unlikely for him to be able to get out and do anything with it. Um, this does okay. It's not great. No, we're, we're going to. We're not going to do that turn, I don't think. We have a video hyping Nick Aldis versus Chris Jericho, just trying to build a little last-minute momentum, which it does. Um, and finally, we have the match, C-. minus, um, Not too bad. Kind of took a risk here and trying to make it a spectacle, seeing what Nick Aldis' psychology would be. Um, it's a fantastic heat for for a match and had good wrestling. Chris Jericho does defeat Nick Aldis in 20 minutes. With the Judas effect, um, had a lot of interference in this match too. Brody King distracted Jericho. Eli Drake attacked Chris Jericho, um, and uh, Hanson accidentally hit all this during all the distractions, which ultimately helped Chris Jericho retain and become uh, or main, retain the title. Um, also, Nick also took a stunt bump. Just threw everything out here. Got the crowd buzzing. Chris Jericho has 72. All this at a 47. Overall, gets us at a 54, which is not too shabby. Um, pretty decent way to end the show. Jericho at the end holding up his um, his uh, title and celebrating in the ring. Um, gimmick. His gimmick is getting stale. He only has, you know, two more shows, though. Not a big deal. Leads us at a uh, C- minus of 54. Gaining popularity in 25 regions with YouTube Red. Not too bad. Um, Try to give Sasha something here, I guess. Everybody seemed pretty okay. Please, please, please. At least it might negate some of Sasha's ill will. Um, I don't care if she's upset. I just don't want her to leave before we uh, we job her out to maybe Kimberly and utilize her a little bit. But her, we're going to twilight her now, and probably the next pay-per-view will be her last, is what I'm thinking. <clears throat> uh, Ricky Starks is annoyed. It was clearly wasted on drugs. Well, no, sh- <laughs> of course you are. Um... New Jack can't sell. New Jack can't do anything. Hanson doesn't get it. It's a Scott Steiner. Um, incident involving New Jack. Uh, we'll just fire. New Jack's pissed off. That's fine. <laughs> He's gone. Don't worry about it. Uh, <laughs> be, be what we needed to do. 
But uh, that it was a, a, a weird time for NWA in the annals of the the three weeks that New Jack had worked here um, and is gone just like that. But uh, hopefully he doesn't come back and sue us. But it seems like it worked out okay. Uh, Sasha is annoyed. We can deal with it, though. Uh, we do have some other morale issues, but nothing horrendous. It's nothing that we can't handle necessarily. Um, overall, pretty good show. It gives us two more Chris Jericho shows. Um, obviously, we have that sort of underlying notion that uh, Brody Lee could have interfered and changed the landscape, but did not because he was locked up. Um, so that kind of still protects some of that um, and leads to a potential for uh, using the Founders Championship when he gets the opportunity. So that was a twofer. Pretty good. Um, I will see you guys next time. Next episode um, will probably be a little bit later. But uh, in the meantime, if you're watching this live tomorrow, we're probably going to be doing a live stream where we're going to check out the demo for TEW 2020, try to learn some of its um, new ideas and new features, and just really kind of check it out. So keep a lookout on that. Um, you can find out anytime I do go live, which I don't do that often by going ahead and uh, finding my Twitter, which is in my account on the About page. So go ahead and go there and uh, join the Twitter community for me. Um, it's the easiest way to get in contact with me and to find out if I'm going live or offer suggestions or harass me, you know, the usual things that you guys like to do. Uh, but anyways, that's it for today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys next time.